my name's Narelle Tout. I'm married and have two grown-up children. I work with Youth With A Mission and for the last 11 years I've been leading a ministry called Art Refuge which uses art to reach out to the lost and broken. Well, I grew up in a Christian family. My dad is a pastor and so growing up Jesus was always one of my, was my best friend. I just always knew Jesus. And then when I was eight, I was going to a youth club with, led by a lady named Judy. And one day she explained to us how Jesus was much more than just a friend, how he was our savior and what he had done. And it just made sense. I was like, why would I not invite him to be my savior? And it was just huge. And after that, I just kept going. Well, I've always loved doing creative things. I've always loved doing art, drawing posters, making things, um, creating things for dolls and um, doing creative stuff for um, school projects and that. And then when I left school, I went to art college for three years. And when we went to England with Youth With A Mission, I did counseling training and I was working with pregnant teenagers and single mums and we would sit and talk to them and they would just not listen. It was like the blinds were down, nobody was home. And then when we started doing something creative, doing painting and things like that, it was like something opened and they would talk about anything and everything while they were being creative. And at that, that point, I was still believing that God didn't want to use art in missions. So I kept putting it down on the altar and saying, okay, God, I put down my art, I'll just be in missions for you. And each time God would give me more art supplies and I'd go, oh, I'm sorry, I just put it on the altar. And then about three years after we moved to join YWAM Perth, I was sitting there one day doing some art, finally got the revelation. Oh, you want to use my art in missions. I'm sure God was there going, finally, she gets it. And it's just been really neat. He's like tutored me in it. He's taught me about art, things that I just wasn't taught at college. And, you know, some of the first things he taught me were about, it's his art, so I let it go. Don't hold it precious. It's his whatever. Don't worry about what people say. Just let him use it, whatever. And again, then I don't need to sell it. I give it away when need be. I sell it when he says to sell it. But it, it's not precious in that way. I don't have to sell it. It doesn't have to be valued. That people don't have to see what I've put in it. It's there to be used in whatever way. And um, then I realized that the counseling and the art just went so well together because art has healing in it and counseling is listening and bringing God's healing again to people and um, that's when I started Art Refuge. When I was working with the homeless I felt like God said to take paper and pencils which are immediate they can do something with it and at times I've taken paints and they've just loved it because it's non-threatening if you don't have oil paints and acrylics and things like that it's not art supplies as such. Coloured pencils anyone can use and lead pencils anyone can use. A smallish piece of white paper is less scary than a huge piece or a canvas. So it's immediately accessible to anybody. So that's the type of thing I did with the homeless. And sometimes I would do some art for them. So it's always different and sometimes like there was one gentleman who never wanted to do art because he was so embarrassed. He said my art's not as good as a child's and I'm so embarrassed you don't want to see it and after five years of asking him would he like to do something I said look if I do a scribble will you color it in for me he's like oh, yeah but you'd have to do the scribble I couldn't even do that so I did a scribble and he painted in sections of the scribble for me and so for him that was it sometimes it's sitting and let, letting them do a picture um, with the victims of domestic violence it's often doing something beautiful, like a tree with lots of beads on it that symbolizes the hope that they have, or pretty pictures, or just making jewelry, things that show them they can make a decision. So with each lot of people that I work with, it's God 
what should I be doing? So th there is no one set answer. Um, I started Art Times because a friend and I realised that as artists we need to practise. And then we realised that as groups we need to. Um, at one point we moved it to a building and it died, so we moved it back to our home. And then um, we moved it to above a coffee shop, again it died. When it's in our home, it grows and thrives. And there's something about coming to a home, so many people walk in and go, oh, it's good to be in a home. And when we've prayed for a building for Art Refuge, God's always said home, till I realised it was our home. <laughs> Um, personally, I really love watercolours and I love chalk pastels, but I don't always use them. I will use whatever medium works to get across the message that I'm getting across. So when I went to Cairo, one of the pieces I did was Tears of the Father, but because it was in Egypt, I felt like use, that I should use mirrored tiles so to represent their mosaics, and then I had cords. So was something that I've never done before. So I guess a lot of my inspiration comes from God and, and from what he says, from his word, from the world around me, from just beautiful things, from what the message is at the time. And if I'm not sure, I'll go back, oh God, I don't know what to do with this. And often it's like, just as I'm going to bed or in the middle of the night, God will go, why don't you try this? And it's something I'd never thought of and I get up and it's perfect. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, good example would have been when I first started going to Kananara. And it was around the time that God had been speaking to me about doing art while I talk. And I'm, I was convinced at the time <laughs> that I cannot talk and do art. I can do one or the other. I can do good art or I can talk and God had been talking to me about doing both. It's like, ah, first of all, I don't like doing art in front of people and God, it's going to look stupid. <laughs> but you know, God knows us better than we do. And so we got to Kananara and God just said, you know, just talk and share. And I was like, do I need to write down? And, and I really felt like I needed to just let God show me what to say. And um, I had done sort of a bit of an outline of the picture, so because it was going to be a hand, and hands, if they're not done right, don't work. So I'd just done a rough outline of the hands and did it as I drew. And when I started off, I said, look, I've never done this before. It, the, the fastest I've ever done a chalk pastel picture is three hours, so I hope you've got plenty of time. Everybody laughed. Um, but it was an amazing time because God, God used it. I can't totally tell you everything I shared because I felt like God reminded me of things as I was going. Um, I had to fight tears at times because of what he was reminding me. Um, there were people fighting tears in the church. Um, the picture ended up great. I have no idea how long it took because afterwards at morning tea, nobody had looked at their watches. Nobody knew how long it took. And then while I was having coffee, someone came up to me and said, do you know, I'm not an artist, but while you were sharing, God healed me. And I was so stunned, I never found out what he was healed of. Um, so I think the times when I really struggle are the times I just have to go, God, I have no idea. And I get so nervous. I'm like, God, I just have to let you. Um, because I think the other thing I struggle with is the whole thing of, I want to look good. Because as an artist, you want to. But when I let go, God can do more. <laughs>